Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a closer look of how we actually find the normal and the tangential components. The tangential component of acceleration is not necessarily that hard to find. The tangential components can simply be found by taking the second derivative of the position along the curve with respect to time. In other words, we take the velocity along the curve, take the derivative of that, and we have the tangential component of the acceleration. But finding the normal component can be a little bit more difficult since the curvature is defined by this expression which is quite complicated. The curvature is a second derivative of y with respect to x divided by the quantity 1 plus dy dx quantity squared to the 3 halves power. So it can be rather difficult. Notice what the normal component looks like, at least the magnitude of the normal component of the acceleration. So instead we can use Pythagorean theorem. We realize that the magnitude of the acceleration is simply the sum of the squares of the individual components, the normal component and the tangential component. So if we solve this for the normal component, that is equal to the square root of the magnitude of the acceleration squared minus the magnitude of the tangential component squared. And if we start with a position vector, which is x in the i direction plus y in the j direction, x and y, of course, being uh, functions of the parametric variable time, then the acceleration can be found by taking the second derivative of the x component, the second derivative of the y component, and then we take the, we square both components, add them together, take the square root, and that gives us the magnitude of the total acceleration vector. And of course, that's expressed in terms of the x and the y components of the acceleration. So x double prime is d squared x dt squared, y double prime is d squared y dt squared. We take those two, we square them, we add them together, take the square root, that's the magnitude of the acceleration vector. And of course, if we then square that magnitude, the square root symbol goes away, but now when we find a sub m, that is equal to the square root of the a squared, a squared is right here, minus the tangential component squared. Now the tangential component right here is this quantity. So we take that quantity and we square it as well and subtract it from the total magnitude of the acceleration. Take the square root of that. That gives us the normal component of the acceleration. And this method is quite often easier to use than this method. At least, now you have two methods. Either one will give you the answer, but sometimes I prefer this one. It makes it easier. And that's how it's done.